Lovable.dev and Bolt.new are both AI app builders that let you create web apps by typing natural language prompts right from your browser. In this video, I share two main reasons why I prefer to use Lovable over Bolt. Just a quick preface, this video is not a knock to Bolt. I think both tools are amazing tools and both have their pros and cons as well. Bolt and Lovable are both iterating incredibly fast and at this point, it seems like each company is just one version update away from leapfrogging the other. Now, before I get into why I like Lovable better than Bolt, we first need to understand how I use these tools. So I use both of these tools for essentially creating UI mockups or bare bones MVP functionality. I'm a software engineer, so I do feel comfortable getting in the code and debugging errors if I need to. But for my usages, I rarely need to look at the code in Lovable or Bolt to understand what's going on. If I do want to edit the code or go crazy with debugging, I just do that with Cursor AI IDE. So I do have a Cursor subscription, but at this point in time, I do not have a Lovable or Bolt subscription. If you've seen my videos using both tools, I have a method of creating a lot of functionality in just a few prompts while staying within the free daily token limit with Bolt and within the free daily message limit with Lovable. So with all that said, here are the two main reasons why I like Lovable better than Bolt. Reason number one is Lovable's try to fix it feature. If Lovable generates an error, it offers you to fix it without wasting a message. Even if it keeps getting an error, as long as you keep clicking try to fix it, it won't waste a message. I found that it does a good job of not getting stuck in an error loop Sometimes you will see the same message one or two times, but beyond that, it does find its way past the initial error. Sometimes it'll get another error, and then eventually it solves the original issue. So right now I'm in lovable.dev. I've actually copied and pasted the prompts from a previous video when I built this Scribbler super simple blog CMS. If you wanna check out that video, I'll leave a link in the description below. But as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner over here, we have an error. So the try to fix it button, sometimes you'll see a little dialog window over here pop up with try to fix it or show logs. But every time there's an error, you'll always see it over here in the chat as well. And if you click on the error, it's going to bring up the build error along with some logs. And here is the try to fix it button right here. So just to demonstrate how it works and that you don't use any messages in my account settings, you can see I'm living on the edge right now. I have one message left for the day. So right now I'm going to click try to fix it. Let's see if Lovable can fix it. Lovable seems to have fixed the issue, but there's one more error. If I go back to my messages, you can see that I still have one message left. So let's go ahead and check out this error. And it is a different error than the first one we got, which is good. We don't want to get stuck in error loops. So let's click try to fix it again. Okay, so it looks like Lovable fixed that second error and there are no issues with the application. So back over here, refresh the page. As you can see, I still have one daily message left remaining. So fixing errors with Lovable doesn't cost you a thing. So now we're over here in Bolt and I'm using the same exact prompts that I've used in Lovable. So I've been stuck in many error loops with Bolt and Bolt unsuccessfully being able to fix its own issues therefore wasting all of my tokens for the day. This especially happens with database functionality. So right now in Bolt, I have used about 75,000 tokens for today. Now, if I go back over here and I click attempt fix, Bolt's gonna try to fix the issue. All right, cool. So it looks like Bolt fixed the issue. Let's do a token check. And now my token usage jumped from 75,000 to 99,000 tokens. It actually fixed the issue on the first try there. That's good stuff. But as you can imagine, if you get stuck in an error loop and you click on Bolt's attempt fix button, you're gonna waste all of your tokens for the day. And because of that, lovable.dev is the clear winner for being able to fix its own issues at no cost to you. Reason number two why I like Lovable better than Bolt is the ability to chat with Lovable for free. Did you know that you can chat with Lovable without wasting a message? There are actually two ways to do this and I'm gonna show you both ways right now. The first way is the original way to do it. So when you chat, as long as you don't tell Lovable to generate code changes in your project, your prompt won't use a message. This is a powerful feature because you can ask Lovable how to go about doing things the best way within the Lovable environment. Yes, you can use Claude or ChatGPT for general questions about development or about the product you're building, but those LLMs don't know, at least not yet, how Lovable works internally better than Lovable itself. So to demonstrate this, you have to say something like, hey, I just want to chat, don't want any code changes right now. Curious. What are our TypeScript mappings? Mappings from to our database tables. How do these mappings work? Java guy familiar with ORMs. Is it about the same concept? Question mark. Remember, if I refresh my account settings page, I have one message left. So you're going to see 
you're able to chat with Lovable without wasting a message. Look at that. I'll explain how TypeScript type maps to our Superbase database tables. This is similar to Java ORMs, but with some key differences. This is super insightful. Now I just gained a lot of knowledge about how our Lovable app works. I still have one message left. So with this feature, you're able to chat with Lovable, get insights, get some analysis, try to work through errors by just chatting and not wasting any messages, which is pretty awesome. So the second way to chat with Lovable for free just got released two days ago. Over here, you can see on January 6th, they just released chat mode. And in chat mode, you have the default mode and you can have the chat only mode. So the chat only mode is a mode that allows you to chat with Lovable without it making edits to your project. I think they just wanted to separate the default mode where you can make changes and really emphasize that if you go into chat mode, you're not going to get any messages deducted. So if you just saw in the default mode, I had to tell Lovable, hey, I don't wanna make any changes, let's just chat. In chat only mode, you can chat all you want without having to say, let's not make any code changes because it already knows that we're just here to chat. So this chat only mode feature comes with Lovable's introduction to labs, which is a section within their settings page where you can have early access to experimental features. So to turn this feature on, if you're here in the settings page, go to account settings and below project visibility, you're going to see a labs section over here and then you have chat modes, ask lovable questions without making edits. So if you toggle this on and go back to your application, if you look in the chat box now, there is a default mode. If you click on that, you can see we are in the default mode, which is where you can chat and make edits to your project. This is the regular mode that we've all been using up until this point. Now you have the chat only mode where you can chat without making edits to your project. So let's click on that. Now we can say something like, I want to understand how our app is implementing CRUD operations with Superbase. So if you're not familiar with React or Superbase or coding, this is a very useful way to actually learn what's going on under the hood. We can get so used to just prompting and prompting and not actually knowing what's going on. And it's useful to sometimes just take a step back and learn so that when you run into issues in the future, you can have a better idea of how to solve them. And in your future apps, you can have a better idea of how to design them and how to prompt them. Remember, the more detailed and the more focused you can be with your prompts, the better your results will be. All right, so after I ask my question, now Lovable saying, let me explain how our app includes CRUD operations with Superbase. So that was the second way to chat with Lovable for free. This is a new feature that you can enable within the settings. You can go between default mode and chat only mode. But of course, as I showed you in the first way to chat with Lovable for free, if you don't want to use this chat mode feature, you can turn it off, disable it, and chat with Lovable by just saying, hey, I don't wanna make any code changes. Let's just have a discussion or let's just analyze what's going on and Lovable won't waste the message doing that. So now we're back here in Bolt and I wanna show you what happens when you ask Bolt a question and you don't wanna make any code changes. So right now I have used 120,000 tokens for the day. I'm gonna say, hey, just want to chat. I don't want to make any code changes. How do we, how does our app handle Superbase CRUD operations, curious to learn. All right, so the good news is Bolt can give you some insight if you ask it any questions. However, as you can see, doing that just to use some tokens. I now have used 139,000 tokens for the day. So because you can ask advice from Lovable for free and doing the same in Bolt will cost you tokens, Lovable comes out on top here as well. So those were my two main reasons why I like Lovable better than Bolt. I just wanna mention a couple other reasons why I enjoy using Lovable better. The first is I think Lovable handles Superbase authentication and implementing CRUD operations a bit better. Lovable definitely is not perfect with Superbase functionality, but it does run into issues less than Bolt. With Bolt, I find it has a hard time fixing its own database errors. I really need to be very specific when prompting with Bolt to prevent issues. Whereas Lovable seems to kind of understand building out auth and CRUD functionality a little bit better. Secondly, at this moment in time, Lovable has GitHub integration, which makes importing the project over to Cursor really, really easy. I imagine Bolt must have this feature in the pipeline as this is super useful. And lastly, Lovable has a much better set of documentation. It's really helpful to get into the docs and learn about how things work. So if you're in lovable.dev and scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see this docs link over here. And it's actually a beautiful set of documentation. Welcome to Lovable Academy. You have the community. This is a Discord, I think. Yep, change log, request feature. Very nicely broken up into different sections. You have step-by-step -step tutorials. What are the integrations all about? Tips and tricks. 
and you have this search bar over here where you can search for you know tell me about chat mode now in bolt.new if you scroll to the bottom you can kind of see it there help center click on help center bolt does have some docs as well but it doesn't seem to be as comprehensive as lovable so those were the current reasons why i like lovable.dev better than bolt.new as i mentioned in the beginning these apps are shipping new features regularly so for all we know next week bolt can push an update to counter all of the points that i made today but if that happens i'll be sure to make another video which app do you like better lovable or bolt what are your thoughts let me know in the comments down below i hope this video was valuable to you hit that like button if it was subscribe for more videos like this and i'll see you in the next one happy coding peace